Hi, in the previous lesson we talked about the abstract and saw the main elements of the research study mentioned in the abstract. In this lesson we're going to focus on the first section of our research study, the introduction. When we did the eye-catching features, we said it is very important. Let's review what we said about the introduction. נחזור קצת על מה שאמרנו לגבי ההקדמה למאמר מחקרי. An introduction usually consists of background literature, ספרות רקע, סקירה של מחקרים קודמים שנעשו בנושא. Sometimes it includes background information about the study. לפעמים יש גם רקע רלוונטי על המחקר עצמו. It has rationale, הרציונל של המחקר. Hypothesis or research question, השערת המחקר או שאלת המחקר. And the purpose, מטרת המחקר. So, in this introduction of the research text, we will look for these elements. Let's look at the introduction. We will skim this section first by reading the first sentence to get an idea of how the writer begins this section. Let's zoom in on the first sentence. Does the phenomenon of leadership, as manifested in adults, also exist among gifted children? This is a question. It sounds like the research question. It sounds like the hypothesis and purpose that we saw in the abstract. Remember? The aim of the study was to determine whether characteristics of leadership identified among adults also exist among young gifted children. And the results confirmed our hypothesis that the characteristics of leadership identified in adults do exist among gifted children. אז ראינו שהמחברים אומרים שהם רוצים לבחון האם תכונות המנהיגות שזוהו אצל מבוגרים, כנראה במחקרים קודמים, גם קיימים אצל ילדים מכוננים. But if we go back to the first sentence in the introduction, we see the question continues. And if so, ואם כן. So we have another question. What are its typical characteristics? מהן המאפיינים או התכונות הטיפוסיות שלה של המנהיגות? We can expect the writer to try to identify, to see those characteristics, מאפיינים, that are connected to leadership, which is the list we saw in the abstract and the list we saw in the table. We already know some of the answers. יש כאן נקודה מעניינת. בוודאי שמתם לב שיש כאן הרבה חזרות בטקסט. האבסטרק למעשה גילה לנו את הפאנצ'ליין, את השורה התחתונה. אנחנו יודעים שהתשובה לשאלה היא כן. זה מה שראינו באבסטרקט. המחברים לא מעוניינים להשאיר אותנו במתח. מי שקורא את המאמר המחקרי רוצה בעצם לדעת את הפירוט. איך עשו, מה מצאו, או איך מסבירים את הממצאים. כל אחד לוקח מהמאמר את מה שהוא או היא Let's go back to our introduction section. We saw that the introduction began with the research question. But not every introduction begins this way. Every single introduction has its own structure. So, let's see how the writers of this text organized their specific introduction. First, we will skim the section. So, Skim the introduction, paragraphs 1 through 9, and read the first sentence of each paragraph. In which paragraph can you see each of the following elements? Background information about the study, background literature, hypothesis or research question, purpose, and rationale. We already saw where the research question was. It was in paragraph one. So we can mark this paragraph one. Take some time to do the rest. Press pause and come back when you're done. You're back. 
Let's see what you've done. Let's go straight to the first sentence in paragraph two. Our follow-up study. What is this about? It sounds like background information. So let's go to paragraph three. In recent years, we have devoted more attention. Hmm. It seems like in this paragraph, the writers are still talking about the same topic. They are focusing on what they have been doing more recently. Let's go to paragraph four. To our mind, promoting leadership qualities in gifted children is of particular importance. Mm. Is of particular importance. Chashuv b'miuchad. It sounds like the rationale. Why the researchers thought it was important to do this study. Let's go now to paragraph five. However, our experience with gifted youngsters, Landau, 1990, we see that this is more background information about the study with the writer's name, Landau. So we can put the paragraph number in the right place. Let's continue to paragraph six. A comprehensive survey of the literature. This sounds like the background literature. So let's put that in too. And from the beginning of the next paragraphs, we can understand that they are all about background literature. Let's see this. In paragraph seven, as a result of checking the literature. In paragraph eight, in his survey of the literature. And in paragraph nine, we see Hollingworth, 1926, wow, found that. כשאנחנו רואים שם משפחה של מישהו בסוגריים, אנחנו יודעים שיש כאן הפניה לטקסט שכתב. מאמר, מחקר, ספר. Let's put all those paragraph numbers in the box near the background literature. So with this we finished the skimming. But it looks like we did not find the writer's purpose. Sometimes if the writers write a clear research question or hypothesis, like in our case, they don't write a purpose because many times a purpose is to answer the research question. And in any case, it can be inferred if from the research question. On the other hand, we might find it in the first paragraph. We don't know everything from the skimming. We didn't read the text yet. So we will put a question mark here. Now, we will not read the whole introduction, but we will focus on some of its elements. We spoke about the research question. The writers add some background information that is important for us to know for later stages in the study. Let's look at paragraphs two and three. The writers explain here about the studies at the Institute. הם מספרים קצת על הלימודים במכון לילדים מכוננים. They say that they made changes in the curriculum. הם עשו שינוי בתוכנית הלימודים. So, our question is, what change did the writers introduce in the Institute's program for gifted children? Read paragraphs two and three. Press the pause and come back when you're done. You're back. Let's see. In paragraph two, the writers explain that they made a follow-up study in which they asked those who were at the Institute 16 years ago questions about the program. הם איתרו אנשים שבעבר, 16 שנים קודם לכן, השתתפו בתוכנית שלהם ושאלו אותם על התוכנית. And what did they see? They saw that in their responses to our questions, these individuals themselves suggested that the Institute put greater emphasis on training gifted children to become leaders. In the first sentence of paragraph three, we see in recent years, we have devoted more attention to the issue of leadership. 
Hmm. And this continues. Today, the Institute offers our students challenges in courses such as decision making, logical thinking, current affairs, psychology, etc., etc. Nice. So, we can say that the change that was introduced in the Institute's program was that the Institute added courses related to leadership. Good for them. This means they could now study our topic, leadership in gifted children. Another interesting point will be to see how the writers explain why this topic, the topic of our text, is important. This means we want to read the rationale. And the rationale we saw in paragraph 4. So, read paragraph 4. Question. What is the rationale of this study? Now, paragraph 4 is not easy. תנסו להבין את הרעיון המרכזי. המשפטים הם מאוד מורכבים, אבל לא צריך כל מילה. אנחנו אחר כך נעבור את זה ביחד. Press pause and come back when you're done. So, here you are. Let's see what you found. In the first sentence of paragraph 4, we see, because this tells us there will be an explanation here. Let's continue. As Tuckman and Janice have noted, let's see what these researchers said. A survey of leaders throughout history reveals, Josef Mengele, Numerous examples of foolhardy and senseless actions. Hmm. We see the word leaders, manhigim, and then the words foolhardy and senseless actions, pe'ulot nimharot v'chasrot higayon. Very negative. But what is the connection between leadership qualities in gifted children and a history of leaders who've made bad decisions? Let's keep on reading to find out. The next sentence is long and difficult. We will use two strategies to understand it. Noticing the marker of contrast, milat nigud, and looking at the sentence structure, mivne hamishpat. It starts with, whereas, it's a marker of contrast, be'od she. אנחנו מצפים שהמשפט יהיה מחולק לשניים, בעוד ש-X יש לנו את Y. Our sentence starts with whereas in the past, so we are expecting in this sentence a contrast to the past. And we see in the future. So now we have two parts, in the past and in the future. Let's start with what happened in the past. Whereas in the past, such actions may have caused these leaders to work against the best interest of their own countries. So those leaders we spoke about before were working against the good of their own countries. But in the future, when life will be much more complex, it's a clause. We can put this in parentheses. If Charles Simmons is so great. In the future, the placing of advanced technology in the hands of leaders, בעתיד, ההצבה של טכנולוגיה מתקדמת בידיים של מנהיגים, who, ש, עכשיו יהיה תיאור של המנהיגים, who lack the knowledge or ability, כלומר, אלו מנהיגים שחסר להם ידע או יכולת. בואו נדלג קצת, זה משפט ארוך. Let's go to the verb of the sentence. Could lead to. יכול להוביל ל. אנחנו כבר מתארים לעצמנו איזו קטסטרופה זה יכול לגרום. A disaster greater than any mankind has known. וואו. כלומר, זה יכול להוביל לאסון. לסיכום. יש לנו היסטוריה של מנהיגים שגרמו נזק בעיקר למדינות שלהם. אבל בעתיד, בעזרת טכנולוגיה מתקדמת, מנהיגים לא שקולים עלולים להיות הרבה יותר מסוכנים לעולם כולו. עכשיו, הטקסט הזה נכתב ב-91, אז העתיד של הטקסט הזה הוא כבר כאן.
the future is here. Now, how does this connect to the rationale? We can infer the rationale from what we know until now. We can say that leadership qualities and gifted children are very important so that our future will not be in the hands of foolish and senseless leaders. This explains why it was important for the writers to mention the leadership course for gifted children. We are ending our lesson. We did a lot. What did we learn? We learned what elements the writers presented in their introduction, like research question, background literature, etc. We read the research question and saw that it had two parts. We learned some background of the study, that the children took leadership courses, and we learned the rationale of this study, how important it is that our future leaders will be able and responsible. How did we learn this? By skimming the introduction and by choosing some important elements of the research study. In the next lesson, we will read the next two sections, which deal with the method and the results of this research study. So, see you there.